The enantiomer of a molecule is simply its mirror image. So when we are asked to draw the enantiomer of a molecule, whether it's in a Fisher projection or not, we are just simply being asked to draw the mirror image of that molecule. And this is actually very simple to do with a Fisher projection. When we draw the mirror image, and I'm going to draw my mirror images just over here to the side, we're gonna start with this molecule right here. First of all, we know we're not making any changes to the carbon skeleton, so I'm just gonna set up a framework for this Fisher projection to match the structure of the original molecules. I'm just kind of creating a skeleton to, to work off of. In the mirror image, we are taking our chiral carbons and we are reflecting them or mirroring them. So that means that we clearly are going to have this sort of a thing going on with our chiral carbons and the substituents that are horizontal. The mirror is located right here and I'm just reflecting those substituents. As far as the top of the molecule and the bottom of the molecule, for a lot of students, especially initially, it's just a lot easier to also reflect the orientation of those substituents as well. So I've again made a mirror image up here and a mirror image right here. And so here is the enantiomer of our original molecule. However, I do wanna let you know and we'll work on this next thing with this example. When we are drawing an enantiomer, our only obligation is to show the mirror image of the chiral portions of the molecule. An achiral portion of the molecule, like this piece right here, because it's achiral, it doesn't have a unique mirror image. So for example, for this particular portion of the molecule right here, it's not necessary for us to reflect that portion of the molecule and draw its mirror image. If we want, we can match it perfectly. Now you might be saying to yourself, that does not make any sense. But remember, in this carbon-carbon single bond in this molecule is freely rotating all of the time. This is a trigonal planar carbon. It's flat. It's not tetrahedral. So this thing is spinning around like a propeller and we can really draw it pointing any direction that we want. There is no chirality on this carbon. So the direction that we point its oxygen and the direction that we point its hydrogen makes no difference. And the same is true for the stuff at the bottom of the molecule. Because this portion of the molecule is achiral, it doesn't matter if we draw it exactly the same or if we reverse it, there is no chirality here. So the direction that we draw this portion of the molecule doesn't make any difference at all. Remember that direction is only important when we're trying to assign R and S stereochemistry. When we're assigning R and S stereochemistry, it matters if a substituent is on the left side or on the right side of a molecule because that's how we will count R versus S. Is it clockwise or counterclockwise? If we're dealing with an achiral carbon, we're never going to be needing to know is it one to two to three or is it one to two to three? And therefore, it doesn't make a difference how we draw it. So let's finish the enantiomer for this molecule right here. Again, making mirror image of the chiral portions of the molecule. So this is pretty straightforward. Another thing that you want to be able to do is draw a diastereomer of a Fisher projection. Diastereomer is something that students, a lot of times they forget what that means. So a diastereomer is a non-mirror image. It's a stereoisomer, meaning it has the same connectivity, but it's not a mirror image. And a great example of diastereomer is cis versus trans alkenes, not mirror images of each other. So if we're being asked to draw a diastereomer of a molecule, we want to draw some portions of the molecule in a mirror image and other portions of the molecule not in a mirror image. And again, I'm gonna mix and match, just like in the last example, I'm gonna mix and match mirroring the achiral portions of the molecule. So in this example, I'm gonna mirror the achiral portions, even though it's not necessary, 
to draw a diastereomer, we need to pick at least one of our chiral carbons to reverse or mirror. So let's pick the one on top. And we need to pick at least one chiral carbon to not reverse. So these two cannot be mirror images of each other. They have to be different. So let's make a note of that. Pick at least, no, let's not, I don't want to say it like that. Um, draw the mirror image of at least one, but not, but not all of your chiral carbons. And when, when I first talked about diastereomers and I was drawing diastereomers, I showed you that there are usually a lot of diastereomers. So if somebody asks you to draw the diastereomer of a molecule, there's usually multiple correct answers. I chose to draw it in this particular way, but I just as easily could have kept this chiral carbon alone, left it alone, and reversed the stereochemistry of the one below. So there's two different diastereomers for this molecule. So when we work on this example over here, because this one has three chiral carbons, that means that we have even more diastereomers, even more correct answers to the question, draw a diastereomer. So that uh, in this situation, we have got to pick at least one of our chiral carbons to draw the mirror image. At least one of them has to be drawn as a mirror image. And it does not matter which one we choose. It doesn't make any difference at all. So I'll choose the one in the middle. I'm going to make that guy be the mirror image. We have to also choose at least one of them to be left alone. One of them cannot be mirrored. So I'll, I'll choose this one on top. I'll make this guy not mirror image. So it's identical. And then for the remaining, which in this case is just one, we could do whatever we want. We could mirror this or we could not mirror this. It's totally up to us. So we have a lot of possibilities of correct answers for this particular molecule in terms of drawing a diastereomer. All that matters is that at least one of the carbons has been reversed, but not all of the carbons has been reversed.